have Wilhelm Schmidt, the CEO of Along and Sone, with us today. Been with the brand since 2011. Um, I think what's special about this brand is its heritage and also its products. And so for us at Hot Time, it's really an honor to have you um, speak with us. But what we're also excited is to talk about some of the new launches that you guys just did because one of them, uh, I was blown away with the sports model. So congratulations <laughs> on a huge uh, success of your two launches. Thank you. So if you don't mind me asking, um, how have you been spending quarantine over the last two months? Look, it's, um, we were definitely under quarantine uh, the first two, three weeks because my son came back uh, from uh, university and he was tested positive. So um, that meant my wife and myself, we had to stay at home. Um, we never got it. So we were tested many times, but we did not get it. Um, and and it, it, we learned how to live with what we do right now, you know, from screen to screen. In, instead of face to face, um, gladly at least in Germany, uh, there was always a certain freedom to go out and, and do your sport and things like this. Um, so you know, it's getting a little easier right now, and hopefully not too easy uh, too quickly. But uh, it looks like we get our arms around it. And to start off, what watch are you wearing today? Are you wearing a watch in the house? And if you are, what watch are you wearing? Uh, yes, you can see it, the type of night of the novelty from last. Oh, amazing. It's my favorite piece. <laughs> I, I have to say, yes, I'm waiting for my Odysseus in, 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 in white gold. Um, but, you know, with... Um, all the hiccups we had um, at the moment, you know, we have very few prototypes and they're all being used for uh, uh, photos and things like that, so I can't wear it. But I had that around for. So tell us about how the brand and other watch brands around the world have adapted to going digital during this time. Um, love to hear your thoughts as the CEO. Yeah. Look, if, if, if once we threw it, um, I believe two um, ideas will remain. The one is that we can do a lot more digital than we ever thought we could do. Um, and the second thing is that we learn or even more value of our personal relationships than ever before. Um, and, you know, I had Zoom meetings with clients about novelties. Um, I am pretty sure had we proposed that six months ago, um, well, first of all, we would have never done it. Secondly, our clients would have never accepted it. And, and so we all realized we had a good time in, in just talking. Um, even if it's screen to screen. So there are things and creativity is usually forced by restrictions. Um, and a lot of things that were unthinkable a couple of months ago are now reality. And I honestly think they're here to stay. I'm not saying that personal interaction is completely without value. I actually think we will use it even more in the future. But it will be aligned by digital communication. Um, in work um, and even for, for, for social. The big uh, talk um, a couple of weeks ago was how the brand just jumped into luxury sports watches at the Watches of Wonder 2020. Um, it doesn't come in the form of a new model, but rather a cur current model made of new materials. Before yes. we get into this watch, um, I actually have a video of it. I would love to play it if it's okay with you. Of course, um, yes, as I think this, I think this watch is um, amazing, and I'd love to play it right now. Um, here we go.
So tell us about this piece, uh, Wilhelm. It's it's amazing piece, and um, it's a huge jump from the brand and the heritage. A, a huge gamble. Well, thank you. Uh, look, as I as we launched the Steel Watch, the Steel of this year, so the twenty fourth of October last year, um, I always said it's it's the beginning of a new watch family. That will be our our sixth. Uh, um, our sixth watch family, and uh, a family is always more than one. So that's why um, we had to come with the next family member as soon as possible. Um, and, and of course, that's, that's why we were thinking of what to do. And to be frank, uh, we had lots of discussions as we launched the first watch, whether we want to launch all the watches. And then decided we go for steel in the beginning. Um, and then as we, you know, as the market get used to uh, the new shape, the new design of, of a sixth watch family from our Langer and Zöhner, uh, we will come with new iterations. And that's why we decided to go for white gold with rubber or a leather strap um, and again you know if you look at the watch carefully even they look similar in detail but actually quite different uh, the movement of course is the same but if you look at the dial um, you will see that the dials are their structure is very different to the structure um, for the Odysseus and steel um, and that's done on, on, on purpose. That's, that's, that's what we wanted to achieve. A different visuality, a different three-dimensionality on the dial um, so that collectors can distinguish between a steel and a white gold. Um, and, um, you know, I, I wish we could already supply some watches so that, you know, the first customer can see the two watches next to each other, but unfortunately that will take a time, um, you know, before we, we can do that. I actually got uh, two or three calls um, from Ho Time collectors asking about the watch, and I was told that you hope to have the watch available during the summer. Is that is that the game plan for the goals? That's the game plan, but again, you know, actually say at the moment, if you want to make love really, God really laughing, come with a plan. Um, so we have a plan um, and we cross fingers and we work hard to achieve it. Um, but you know, the, uh, the, the current situation is, uh, needs also that we have a few things that are still unpredictable. But our plan is to start the physical distribution in summer. And you launched, um, you touched upon it, but I'd love to kind of understand more. You launched it in a white gold model. Um, tell us uh, why you wanted to do the white gold with a leather strap and a um, with two different straps also. Yes. Um, look, there are people that like steel and there are people that like gold. And to be honest, uh, traditionally, our customers, they prefer precious metal. Um, and <clears throat> To, to, to give a good answer to them, and if, if you go back to the discussion we had around the Odyssey, specifically in the early days of its launch, uh, you will hear quite often um, that we call them die-hard Langer and Zöhner fans asking for what can they have that on a leather strap and precious metal. Um, so it's again, it's, 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 it's a request from customers um, and, and of course, it took us a lot longer to work on that than just waiting for the request. That's why we have all these watches um, in the pipeline. Um, and rest assured, there is more to come. But, you know, it takes time now to, to, to come up with the other iterations. It will be a watch family uh, with uh, more than three members eventually. Oh, amazing. And now that the steel has been out uh, for some time, um, what has the response been, you know, from the customers? Because I remember when it came out, it was a huge shock with the steel uh, bands. I loved it. And obviously now if you're expanding the brand, you know, um, into other models, you said more than three, 
it must be it must have been very positive. But when you came out, I mean, having that steel band was a little aggressive for the brand. What was it like, uh, the response, and now a year later, or, you know, sometime later? Yeah, quite frankly, I would have been very disappointed had we had not these discussions in the beginning, because, you know, we want to do something which is not covered by our traditional five watch families. So it had to be something totally different. Uh, so it still had to be a and Zuna. And, you know, we can't produce a watch that is like for everybody. That's impossible, specifically with the numbers of watches we produce. It's also not really our interest. So um, for those that don't like the design, but like our other five watch families, as you can see, we still uh, launch new products in those as well. Um, and what we realized over time, um, and remember, I think I also said that uh, as we launch, try to watch, put it around your wrist, see how it works for you on your wrist, see whether it's comfortable, whether you read it, and whether it you know, suits you. Uh, what we realized in the meantime that a lot of customers came and they were not sure whether they're going to like the watch or not. But after trying, they changed their opinion. Um, and that's an invitation to literally everybody. Before you come to a conclusion, never forget the natural habitat of a wristwatch is the wrist and not paper and not the digital world. Give it a chance, try it. If you then don't like it, that's fine. Um, there are other watches from us that you may like a lot better. Uh, but at least give it this try. The next watch I want to um, showcase in the movie is my favorite. Let's watch this real quickly. I'm putting it on video. To me, um, this is one of the most beautiful watches in the market. Um, it's your fifth year coming out with the Z Work Minute Repeater, and you came out this time with in white gold with an amazing blue dial. Um, it's limited to 30 pieces. Um, what was the response from your retailers and customers on this piece with the blue dial? Big question, why only 30? Um, you know, but it takes quite a while for us to produce these 30 watches. That's why there is a limit to what we can produce. Um, and an interesting um, experience that I went through is you know, you just you can't simply take a movement um, from a platinum watch, that's the first iteration of the Zeitwerk uh, minute repeater, put it into white gold and think it all works out because you deal with acoustics. And we wanted to achieve a very special tone um, and you have to work the hammer and the gong to achieve that uh, um, to achieve that specific soft and warm tone, which is different to the crisp and clear tone that we wanted to achieve with the platinum watch. Um, so despite the beautiful blue dial, uh, a lot of work from a very experienced watchmaker to give it that special feeling on that special tone. And what, um, what was the response on your uh, retailers for both of the watches that you just launched at Watches of Wonders? Um, I'll be honest with you, of course, they now want these watches um, and we are in total short supply for the steel watch. Um, and I'm afraid to say, I believe it will probably be very similar for the white coat version. And I can understand the partners around the world that say launch orange watches and then you can't supply. But again, uh, you know, we don't have endless production capacity, as you know. And if you look um, onto the back of the watch and you see 
how the movement is finished and assembled becomes pretty clear that we can't just produce lots of them. Uh, so the limit and the, um, the downside on our uh, way is always, you know, that unfortunately we will only produce a certain amount of watches and that's usually a lot less than requested or demanded at the moment. But that's a so positive a sign. With luxury also yeah, well, I mean, that's an amazing that story. Knows. It's an amazing story to hear the, re the, the response from your retailers because um, I know on the sports watch, that was one of the hottest watches and on Instagram, it's, it's up every day as your clients, customers are very excited, but it's also priced well uh, in the US under $40,000, right at 39,000 in the white gold. So you priced it very um, affordable for your collectors also. Okay. Love There's to get your hierarchy. thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Well, there's a price hierarchy, and if you look at it, because we always say for us, uh, um, there has to be a clear hierarchy, and that's what we apply to. We don't look too much into what the market is offering. Uh, we rather look into our own uh, pricing uh, later, and, and that's why we priced it where we, where we priced it. I'd love to get your thoughts um, because obviously your brand took part in the digital watches of wonders this year. Um, we talked yes. about a little at the beginning, but I'd love to get your thoughts about it. Um, and do you think that signifies, signifies a big shift for the industry? Do you see or foresee big shows coming back in the future or do you see a lot of it going digitally? What's your thoughts on this? Yes, yes, that's a very difficult question to be frank. Um, I think we all realize that you can do a lot more digital than we thought before you could do, specifically at the high end of the market. Um, I still believe uh, the personal interaction, um, you know, the, the, the physical display of a watch to, you know, if, if I now would sit next to you and it could give you the this year's or the minute repeater, we could listen to it. Um, I, I still believe there's a lot of value to that. So I believe for the foreseeable future, we will learn that the, the digital world will complement uh, the physical world. Uh, but I also believe that we're all desperate to get a bit more physical contact again, you know, to have the one-on-ones, to have interviews where you can see each other in the eyes and, and not just through a screen. And if you, did you ever think you could walk, you know, launch watches digitally? Uh, I mean, don't you think now that it, 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 it has happened and it's worked, as you said, it's going to change the way brands uh, reach out because your customer base is global. And, and yeah. in one day, you were able to reach them. Look, there's, there's no question, <clears throat> as before, I think a lot of people, uh, before they come into a boutique or to a point of sale, they do their homework, and mostly, most of them do it in the digital world. Um, and uh, the, uh, the whole situation of social distancing and you know, containment is just fueling that even more than before. Um, again, I'm pretty sure had we asked for Zoom interviews with our clients six months ago, uh, I'm not sure whether they would have appreciated it because uh, if we had done it, you know, it's, it's almost like a chicken and egg question. Um, but now that we all know we can't meet physically for a while, um, there is a, there's an appetite, there's a hunger for it to, to, to talk and interact. And at the moment, the only way to do it is the way we just do it uh, through, through Zoom or other uh, instruments um, and communicate via the digital world. So, Wilhelm, I'd love to get your uh, analysis of what is one quality of the brand that, in your opinion, is the most significant in giving the brand its competitive edge. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what makes um, the brand special. You know, I'm not talking about competitive edge. I leave that to others. 
Well, what I know for sure is, um, I think for a global player, which we are, um, we offer a very authentic product. Authentic in a way, it's lots of labor work, that craftsmanship that goes into it. And it doesn't matter whether you buy a gram complication for almost 2 million or a Saxonia thin for 16,000. The, the amount of craftsmanship is always the same. Um, you know, the polishing, the decoration, the people that do it are actually the same. Uh, we assemble everything twice, as you know, to ensure um, that we um, have a perfect result from a technical point of view, but also from an aesthetical point of view. Uh, that is very German. I think a lot of our design is very German, it's very legible. Um, it's user friendly. Trust me, uh, my eyes are not getting better. And I need a date on my watch. Um, and an outsized date is perfect to, to, to accommodate that desire. Um, and then we also, I think, have a very interesting history. You know, family company for 100 odd years, um, expropriated by, by the communists, um, and then came back like Phoenix out of the ashes uh, straight after reunification. And, and, and ever since launching the first four watches in 1994, uh, we are somebody that people that know about fine watches look at um, and appreciate and acknowledge. Um, and I think these three things are pretty unique in, in the watch industry. I think also what makes a brand special, uh, you just talked a little about it, is um, it's one of the most, it's probably the most prestigious brand uh, based in Germany. Tell us a little about that when most brands are based in Switzerland. Um, I honestly think, you know, there are many, many good companies in Switzerland um, and they're all say made in Switzerland. So it's an advantage because we are what I would call the oddball. You know, I was a watch collector all my life um, and I can remember as 1994, the newspapers uh, were displaying the four watches of Alang und Söhne and, and even I as a German who was sort of flabbergasted to see Jesus, somebody from Germany uh, is, is, is playing on a high field of Swiss watchmaking. Um, so I think it's an advantage because there are many uh, very prestigious Swiss uh, made brands, but there is us um, in, in Germany, which is pretty unique. When I did research, about you, um, you're a big car guy before the brand you used to work at BMW. You love cars, correct? I do love cars and watches, yes. If I quote my wife, I think she summarized it the best as I worked in the car industry. I was spending my pocket money on watches. Um, now that I'm in the watch industry, I'm spending my pocket money on cars. So, um, you know, it's, it's the two passions that I have in life, cars and watches. I like how you connected um, the brand to really elite car collector shows. Um, tell us about it, because you, 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 you co-sponsor and sponsor a few of them. Tell us why you made that decision and, and what, the, what the benefits are for the brand reaching that client base. Yeah, look, we were looking of an event where we can find our values, craftsmanship, you know, all these cars are usually handmade um, and the restoration of these cars is usually nothing you can do with stock standard people. You need very skilled craftsmen to do it. Um, history and heritage is very important on these, at these, at these events. Um, and on top of that, you know, it's, it's a nice environment our guests that are usually not into classic cars, but we also realized that the collectors of vintage cars usually are also fascinated by mechanical timepieces. So again, we bring customers to an environment which they enjoy, um, and we meet people there that can thoroughly appreciate what we offer. And, and that's why over time, uh, expand our footprint in that field. So today we have three events, you know, the Concordia de Gaulle in Italy, 
Hampton Court in, uh, in England and, and Schloss Duc, Castle Duc, which is uh, quite a big event uh, taking place in, in almost the center of Germany, close to Düsseldorf and Cologne. And I mean, to me, uh, I always look at the pictures at your events, and that's a good um, that's a good analysis comparing the craftsmanship of the watches to the cars. If you had to compare it to any car, um, what, how would you compare the watch to to any car or one of your favorite cars? You know, it's it's very difficult because modern cars um, they all have to. Um, comply with homologations, uh, um, restrictions, and so on and so forth. So it uh, would be very unfair to compare what we do with, with these cars. Um, but if you go back, I always like to see a Lange and Zöhn in line with a 300 Gullwing or a 507 BMW. You know, very German cars, but extraordinary at the time. Uh, great in performance, great in craftsmanship very successful and, and timeless in their design approach. Um, so I think these two for me would probably be the ones that I choose if I had to find a car representing a Langonzo. I like the analysis to the goal wing. That's a, I, I, I agree with that. That's a good one. Um, so I'd love Wilhelm, I'd love to get your thoughts. You've been with the brand for some time. What's your goals or where do you want to take the brand in the upcoming years? Look, I think we have a very clear strategy and that is we, we want to stay close to our uh, clients. Um, I think everything we do is to ensure that there is no hurdle between us and the clients. Um, and our whole strategy is let um, by the desire to remove hurdles, to be accessible, um, to talk to our customers. Um, so that's our, that's our main strategic sort of golden threat to all our activities. Um, we are working on it as we speak and we will continue working it. Um, and again, what we do right now, the exploration of the digital world to stay in touch very personal with our Clients is um, another facet of things that we will further investigate and further improve and work with. And when you say your clients, where, um, where are your clients? What countries are you strong in? Is it worldwide or is there some countries you're stronger in than others? I first of all think that our clients travel a lot and that always makes it very difficult for me to say we are strong in XYZ because you never know uh, whether or not people that live actually somewhere else go there to shop um, or whether it's really the country. What I believe is um, there is a growing community uh, of watch enthusiasts um, and they are predominantly younger than what we traditionally think. Um, and, 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 and we can very nicely connect with them because what we do is special, it's different, it's unique, and they like the authenticity that comes with it. Um, if I had to describe a typical client, um, I would struggle with age, I would struggle with nationality, uh, but there are a couple of things that I believe represents them very well. First of all, they are experts. They are competent and their decision to buy us is usually um, a very educated purchasing process. Um, that's the one thing. And the second thing is uh, they're quite self-confident. They usually buy stuff not to prove that they made it because we are very, it's, it's, it's a lot of money to buy a brand that is not known to many people. Um, so they do it really to please themselves. Uh, that's the other big common denominator. Um, and you can find these people in uh, Europe, in America, in Asia, in China, in India, and the Middle East. Um, so, so gladly, that's a growing community. I know it's not the answer you want, but it's actually the answer which suits us very well um, and, and which works for us. No, that's a great answer. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts. 
because we have a lot of watch collectors uh, from athletes and um, from celebrities, and we always try to educate them into buying some of brands such as yourself. For them watching, can you give a suggestion, maybe one or two ideas of watches that you would recommend them to look at so they could get into the brand? What are one or two pieces that you think would be good to start um, for new collectors for your brand? Look, it's a, it's a challenging question uh, because usually it's a very expensive answer. Um, <laughs> I would think that a Langer one, because it's our evergreen, you know, it's our most successful uh, watch for the last 25 years, very likely for the foreseeable future as well. Um, so a Langer one is something which you can wear wherever you go. Um, we usually have very, very strong chronographs. So any chronograph from us um, is, is also, you know, touching the bar specifically if you turn it around and, and you look into the movement. Um, and if you are a little extrovert, I believe that Zeitwerk is a, is a, is a good recommendation. Uh, to my knowledge, there is no other brand that at numbers produces something like the Zeitwerk. Um, which illustrates they are very difficult to produce. That's an easy watch to read, but a very difficult watch to assemble. Um, so I would go for the three. For that one, every chronograph, every side there. And, and you're, you're actually wearing the Z-Work today, correct? With the gray yes. dial? I saw it yes. quickly. Yeah, which to me, that's one of the most beautiful watches that's made on the market and I always recommend a lot of collectors that piece for the money is one of the best investments on the market. Thank you so much. It's very kind. You're welcome. I love that you're wearing it. Makes me feel like I, I have good I have good taste if the boss is wearing it. <laughs> so Wilhelm, um you've been in business for nine years. Um obviously this has been a global um, pause, but how do you foresee the rest of the 2020 for the watch industry going? I mean, you talked a little about social distancing. I mean, you have boutiques, you have retailers around the world. What are some of your thoughts of how we could move forward in the watch industry for 2020? Yeah. I, I do believe that uh, life is coming back. Um, you know, and it's a little bit like after winter, spring comes and everybody's happy to go out again. Um, it's, it's, it's still very early days um, and I don't see myself in a good position to make an educated uh, or have an educated opinion about what's going to happen. We stay very vigilant. Uh, we stay very close to our people. We do everything to protect them and, and, and their beloved ones. Um, so we really took a lot of measurements and, and I have to say very helpful with that as well. They gave us lots of support. Um, we tried to stay close to our clients in any possible way and, and then we'll see um, if and how markets come back. I think it's too early to really um, evaluate it right now. I have a couple of questions from the audience um, before we go, if you don't mind. Can I ask a couple? Of course, yes, go. One of them is the original datagraph was no longer produced after the uh, introduction of the datagraph up and down. Will the Z-Work time only stop being produced with the production of the Z-Work date? Sorry, say it again, the side, which one? The, side? Uh, the right. original datagraph was no longer produced after the introduction of the yes. data graph up and down. Will the Z-Work time only stop being produced since you've done the production of the Z-Work date? No, we will continue. These are different, these are different models. So the Zeitwerk family, as you know it today, unless it's a limited edition, will, will continue to stay. And then another question is, with the creation of the beautiful Odysseus bracelet, could we please have some bracelet options for other Lang watches? Um, I currently own a time-only Z-Work and would love to have that option for my bracelet. Is that possible? 
you know that we used to have that in the past and we realized they were always wrong. They were too short, too small. Uh, we built up a huge amount of stock and eventually we decided to stop it because um, it's, it's individual uh, watches. And on top of that, we realized it's an easy way to double the value and the cost of a watch. So for the foreseeable future, uh, we are not planning to come up with uh, precious metal bracelets uh, for our traditional watches. Um, I have a question from Royal Caribbean Jewelers in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah. Um, they're a client of yours, um, Christopher Crossley. <laughs> he just asked, uh, as you mentioned design and cars, what about with yachts and their designers? Have you worked with any or plan to? No, we work with our in-house designers. Um, you know, we don't, we don't give watches to celebrities. We don't have brand ambassadors. We also don't have uh, other designers. We work solely in-house uh, with our own resources. That's one thing I love about the brand because a lot of brands work with celebrity ambassadors. Um, it's, you know, very important for a lot of brands, but you guys have always um, stayed with your DNA. Um, but I love the, the partnership that you've been doing with, with cars because I'm a big car guy myself and I think there's a lot of characteristics. Have you ever wanted to get into the celebrity ambassadors or have you been very, um, you know, are you confident in what you're doing and want to stick to that strategy? Yeah, we are fundamentally confident in what we're doing and to be honest, a lot of uh, celebrities that have our watches, they just bought them themselves. That's why I can't quote them. Uh, but there are quite a few people out there that have our watches. Uh, we are just not a red carpet brand by, by nature. It's not our DNA. It's not our, that's not how we see us. Um, we believe that all our customers are brand ambassadors um, because they, they spend a lot of hard earned money to buy one of our watches and, and, and then they deserve to be treated all equally. And that's why they're all brand ambassadors uh, for us um, and we don't pay people to wear our watches. So Will, um, um, I know you're very busy uh, in today's market. I really appreciate you taking the time um, to, to educate our collectors about the brand. We're always talking about how great the brand is to leave off uh, to Hot Time Collectors, love to get your parting thoughts of, of, of just the brand and, and where, you know, your, your thoughts from, you know, uh, so we could have some good parting thoughts from you. Sorry, I, you were breaking the last part. I couldn't. I'd love to get your parting thoughts uh, to end the webinar from you. Um, a lot of our collectors are getting into the brand and look up to you. So it'd be great to get some of your thoughts um, before we end our webinar today. Look, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's, we all have a lot of time on hands because we don't travel right now. Um, and um, I think if you are interested in fine watchmaking, that's a good time to familiarize yourself with it. I think there are good sources like what we do right now, or even even go more deeper into it. Um, I do exactly the same. You know, I follow um, a lot more uh, the digital world right now than I ever did before, because I have the time, at least at uh, you know evenings. Um, the most important thing at the moment, I believe, is that with all the clouds in the sky, we do not forget there is some there and uh, you know have good moments and joyful moments and uh, you know if our conversation that we had in the last sort of 40 minutes uh, you know created for the one or the other that moment that he or she appreciated or enjoyed then my job is done for today i love that um and i really appreciate your time and i want to congratulate you because i think the sports watch you guys hit the ball out of the park um, as a lot of um, my friends that are collectors and other brands were like, what's this watch? I want to get it. So I think it's going to open up the doors to a lot of big collectors to appreciate the brand like we have. So congratulations. Thank Wonderful. Thank Thanks. you so much for your time, Will.
Thank you Lydia, sir, so much. Stay, stay safe and healthy and sane and uh, don't forget to enjoy those moments. Um, they're still there. We just have to look for them. Thank you so much, sir. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Likewise. Cheers.